Hi, my name is Joel Kruiswick. I thought I'd take you through a day in the life of a developer when using GitLab. So this might be the way I would expect to start my day, taking a look at my Kanban board, taking a look at what work I may have, taking a look at the things that are facing me today. Okay, and I can filter that down. But maybe before I jump into this work, I should get a little better picture of where this work actually came from. So let's back up a minute. I'm going to go up a few levels. This is the group, the group level. Now, if you think of it from a hierarchical perspective, think of it from the perspective of how your teams work today. This is the Tanuki Corp, a corporation, a group within the corporation, several different projects underneath based on the spring, based on Node, based on a mobile project. This is where the developers are working, either in one project or across multiple projects. Now on the left-hand side, you'll notice that we call out epics, which would be kind of the parent uh, of the parent-child hierarchy when it comes to work. And we think of things like issues being the children of epics. So it's that top level work. And you also see here things like issues and merge requests. Now this issues view is a view up from the one where we started. This is a cross project view. I can look at each of these projects simultaneously. But we were saying we wanted to look at where the work came from. Well, just conceptually, what you see here is the epics and you can see I've got 8% complete. Okay, so this is the business level work. This is the portfolio level items, things like recreating the web experience, rolling out the initial UI, and you can see that data is rolling up from the issues that are underneath those. So let me just click into one of these real quick. We'll recreate the web experience. And you can see, yes, that's in dire need of an update. That's looking pretty old. We scroll down, what you'll see here is the hierarchy. Okay, so this is the parent initiative. And below this, you can see I've got to roll out the initial UI, that's a a feature level item. And below this, now you can see we're getting into the projects themselves, this cross project roll up of the issues. So the issues are unfolding out of the initiatives, the features, the other epics that are up above the issues that I was about to start on. Okay. So from that perspective, I'm going to go ahead and jump back into that issue that I was about to choose from the Kanban board. And couple things to note here before I do, you can see the sprint rolling up or the milestone, you can see the weight, you can see the owners, and you can see kind of that uh, red, yellow, green gut check to give you an idea how we think we're doing in getting this thing delivered on time. So I'm going to click in and this will bring me to my issue. This is where I might start my day as a developer. Looks like I've got a little error there. This is where I would begin to take a look at the context of the code that I'm about to write. Okay, so I can attach screenshots here, I can insert mermaid diagrams, lots of things I can do with the descriptions. Uh, but on the right side, you see that it's tied to the epic, which we just took a look at. That's what rolls up that percent complete. We also tied it to a milestone, the current sprint. Now we might tie it to an iteration, we might tie it to a different milestone, uh, but this is that attachment to some way in order to burn down the data over time. We can do time tracking in here. We can do due dates in here. We can assign labels. And, and the Kanban board, which we'll go back to in a minute, is actually the thing that leverages labels. Okay, So it's sorting, filtering, uh, all those kind of good things. But we can also use those to drive the columns on the Kanban board, which is really important for us to understand what our workflow looks like. So you can see we use labels for just about everything in a common way here. The weights, we talked about that. It health status, we mentioned that as well before. Okay? And if I scroll down, you can see we can have linked issues. So in this particular case, notice my context has changed. In the epics, I had that hierarchical view of work. Here I get to see kind of what's going on, what else does my work affect? Okay, So if this was a defect that was a, an issue type, maybe that defect affects some other work that's being done. Uh, in this particular case, you can see we're actually blocking some other work from getting done. What is that work? Well, let's jump in and take a quick look. Okay, and that'll get me back to my core project. This is where we started. Okay, 
So this is going back to my Kanban board, pulling this work, starting on this work. When I get into this one, okay, and this is one that I own, notice it's blocked by that other one. We talked about that already. And I have a merge request that's already been started. So before I start coding, I'll start a merge request, which will also create a branch. Now, as we do that, we can start coding either from the default IDE here in the GitLab platform, or we can use our own web IDE, check in via command lines, et cetera. In this particular case, I've already made a change. So let's take a look at how this works. You can see there's four distinct sections as part of a merge request, okay? So I made a commit. And by the way, if I was a verified committer, if I had signed my commit, that would actually show up here. I can actually take a look at the pipelines that ran, okay? So I can see exactly what happened. We'll dive into this in a little bit more, just a minute. And then we can see the changes that were taking place. And in this case, I've actually started a code review here. Note that I've made a comment. I can comment per line of code here, start a code review. And what's important about that is not only are we executing peer reviews here before we can do approvals, but if I go back to my overview, you can see I need to actually finish that review. If I don't finish that review, I can't merge the code, okay? We can set this up so that if the, the merge request is not approved, we can't commit the code. If the pipelines don't pass, we can't commit the code. If the code reviews aren't complete, we can't merge the code, okay? Do you see what's going on here? We can't merge that code in unless we meet the criteria we've set forth. Now that's all customizable. In this particular case, uh, we've got a few things that are happening. First of all, the pipeline. So let me jump into the pipeline real quick and show you what's happening here. I leverage GitLab's auto DevOps. Every time I commit some code from the IDE, this pipeline will run. And in this case, uh, this is what we consider to be kind of a, a minimally viable pipeline of sorts, right? This is your, your best practice for a minimally viable pipeline. It does the build, it does the test, it examines your code quality, but all this in the middle here is about security, okay? We're doing secrets detection, license uh, scanning, we're doing dependency scanning, we're looking at the container to make sure it's safe. All those things are happening here, and again, this is out of the box with Auto DevOps in GitLab. It spins up a review app. This is complements in this case of Kubernetes, which is spinning this app up within it. And since the app is now running, we can run a dynamic security scan against it and a browser performance scan. Now all those pieces are running dynamically. And again, this is out of the box. Obviously you can customize this to be whatever you need it to be within your environment. But the data that comes back then shows up here in the merge request. So you can see I can scan the, expand this down and I can see SAST and dependency scanning, container scanning, and you can see here's where we found a few things and we'll have to determine whether those are acceptable or not. Uh, you can also see kind of what the DAST scan did. In this case, it scanned for URLs. In another case, it may be tied to the APIs that we're trying to test. Okay, but this data shows up and gives us that ammunition we need to say, hey, is this the right thing? Okay, it gives me the data to understand, is this the right thing for the, the commits that I made? Okay, am I safe to merge this code? Now here too, you can see that we've got approvals. In this case, I've got a quality approval required, product management and security are optional. <laughs> optional security strikes me as kind of a funny thing. I believe that probably shouldn't be optional. But in this case, you can see you can have a number of people who are approvers as part of this. And once everyone is on board, then we can merge this code into production. Now, what else might I be doing today? Well, I'm obviously writing code, I'm working on issues. If I come back to my board and, and take a look at what is in flight today, what kind of things are whipped today, uh, you can see I'm looking at just my work, so I'll go back to the whole team's work. And when I do that, I can see a couple of other things that are happening. This is mine that I'm working on, but I can see that someone else is actually working on security vulnerabilities. Uh, that might actually be waiting for my review, okay? So I can, I can actually be notified when that code is ready for a peer review. And in this particular case, I can also go to the analytics and look at code review. 
Okay, and here using GitLab at the project level, I can take a look at what merge requests are open, what changes there are, and uh, who's done approvals so far. And in this case, I can see that this has been a review time for 18 days. I hope I'm not the only peer reviewer for this one. Otherwise, it doesn't reflect real well on me. Okay, so this is just an insight into some of the things that we talked about today uh, as it relates to the life of a developer. So you've got your Kanban boards, working in an issue, creating a merge request, creating or editing code using the IDE, checking in changes or committing changes over time, verifying those changes were safe and secure, and contributing to peer code reviews. So lots of different data available here. Now, as I step back from my work a little bit, I may be curious about things like, well, how many issues are we getting done over time? Are we consistent? Uh, am I part of a high performing team and why? What's going on with the work that we're doing? Why does it feel like we're overloaded, right? There's lots of questions we might have. And so when we get into things like analytics and insights, it gives us some idea as to where silos might be. It gives us an idea if we're inconsistent in our work, which may indicate uh, sizing problems or something like that. Yeah, but there's lots of different information that is available here within the analytics including things like the value stream analytics, which tell us over time, how long does it take for us to get things done in each and every stage? Now you can see I need more data here. My project's been a little light, uh, but there's lots of information that's available. Same thing if I go back up a level, okay? I'm gonna go back to the group for just a moment. And you can see here, we also have analytics. And again, it's contribution analytics, insights and issues analytics, things that uh, we'd be interested in over time telling us if we're on track and if we're consistent or if we're struggling in any particular area. Maybe we need to uh, learn some new technologies, find some new folks to help us out, or uh, any number of other things. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me. And uh, I do hope that you enjoyed this presentation of A Day in the Life.